Hi, I'm M0TIG, uh, Gary, um, and today we're actually going to be putting together one of our little pie kits, and this particular uh, one is the Magnum. Um, okay, um, what we're going to be doing is the we're going to be unpacking the case, and you'll notice that it comes a nice little package, um, like that little wrapper. Um, you get the, the little dongle in a nice little package like that. Um, you obviously get the Raspberry Pi, and inside there there's actually an image we've already cut an image um, to a disc for you so all you've really got to do is assemble the case plug it in and away you go and um, we've also included a power supply um, and that, that's pretty much that um, inside the box that's what you're getting um, that's the raspberry pi itself it's a little quad core um, really neat little piece of uh, kit and it's relatively powerful really for its size um, you'll notice there's a, a little tiny SD card 8 gigabyte SD card um, and we've actually done an image on that for you so that you you've really don't have to do very very much at all um, and let's get on really and show you how to assemble it okay um, so let's put it together Right, well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to unwrap the, the packaging. Um, it's a, like a sweetie bag. Um, and what you're going to find inside there is a, is a whole bundle of wafers like this. And you'll notice that they've all got numbers on. Um, you've actually got zero, one, two, three, and obviously this one's unmarked, but it is four. And they basically get assembled in, in that order. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take the top, top few off okay and you're going to leave the clear one and then obviously the layers one and two i'm just going to put those to one side for a moment you're then going to take your pie um, and you'll notice that one end has a cutout essentially on it and that's for the the um, sd card that goes in the end there okay and that's quite simple you put layer zero down first layer one and then layer two and then your pie will actually sit quite neatly inside that, like so. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. You can see it just fits inside quite neatly. All right, and then just put the, all the numbers all to the same side and that just sits on top of that little lot, like so. You then take layer number three. That's your three. There's the two in that corner and that just drops on the top. And then obviously the top layer, um, you put it to the side so you can read it, the information on, and that quite simply then drops over the top, like so. And then this, you've got a nice little bag of bits. Let's take those to one side. You've got four screws in there, and sometimes there's five nuts. Okay, and you've got a little tiny spanner. I don't know if you can actually see that. It's a little um, acrylic spanner. Okay, and you quite simply just push the screws through the holes and then just put a little put a little nut on the back like so well, it might be worth just doing it diagonally and it holds it together there you go and that's it pretty much assembled like so and one more it pops in there okay and that's it pretty much and if you want to you can use the little spanner just to tighten them up 
but I wouldn't go too too mad. They're, they're only nylon screws, and it's, it's not holding a bridge up, so it doesn't need to be tight. Okay, and that's it. That brings me on to the next part, which is the is the Wi-Fi adapter. Now I'm not going to unpack that one because it's obviously it's a stock item, so I'm going to put that back together. I've got one here I prepared earlier. It's slightly different, but it's the it's the same thing. Um, and what we do is we put that in one of the USB ports, like so. Um, and you're going to be buying this probably to for the DV4. Um, and you just quite simply plug the device in into the, and that's the main unit assembled. Okay, now we've assembled it, um, this is what you're left with. You've now got your Wi-Fi dongle um, and you've got your DV4 um, mini um, and you've got the, the case that you've, you've uh, just assembled. Now, all we are really going to do now is we, we're going to, we've got to connect to this and there's various ways of doing it. You can, you can either connect this, um, a mouse and a keyboard to this um, and use an HDMI monitor uh, um, or um, as I prefer to do it is actually headless um, where you can actually put this away you know tucked away um, and use your Wi-Fi network and this is completely standalone just a, a small power supply which I'll show you just here um, it comes with the kit um, it's just a straightforward uh, Raspberry 2 amp uh, Raspberry Pi power supply there you go um, just a wall walk um, and th that will essentially allow you to, to run that completely independently of any, anything else so no other computers needed so first things first we're we're going to um, we're now going to actually have a look at um, getting this um, connected to so what we're going to do is we're going to download a piece of software called um, IP um, scan um, and it's fairly straightforward to, to find um, just Google um, IP scanner um, and you'll probably find something there you go advanced IP scanner um, that's the one I used just download it it's fairly straightforward simple file um, and it works um, or you can actually use your mobile phone um, if you uh, look at something like um, I think if you've got an Apple device you can use something called Fing um, I don't know if you can see that um, just there there's actually it got something there called a, a, a thing and what, what you do is you can actually scan the actual network this is connected to as long as it's the same network and you can actually see all the IP addresses of all the um, the items that are actually connected to your um, network so get rid of that. so what we're going to do is we're going to do that scan now um, it'll ask you to do the install well you don't have to install it you just say okay to the English language and you're just going to say I'm going to run it so once this actually runs you'll see that it just comes up with like a scan button and you just hit hit scan and it will just go through all the different um, items on your um, on your network and it should highlight there um, the, the different uh, things so what we're going to do let's get rid of that for a second First of all, plug your Ethernet cable in and then plug the power supply in. Okay, and then just allow it to boot. You give it sort of like four minutes or so, um, and that'll be, you know, it'll have its IP address issued. And then what you do is you go to your IP scan, and it'll ask you then whether what language you want to run it in. Well, obviously, English. Um, and in this particular case it's saying would you like to install or run well we only want to run it um, and then once it's run um, this little box will come up with a green scan button and you quite simply just press the little green scan button and now that will search all of the IP addresses on your um, on this particular network and actually then give us um, our Raspberry Pi address and there it is there look in our case it's 539 and that's the, the, the important bit it's 192.168.539 that's all we needed to know from that um, and you can close that now um, you then if you go to your um, 
Windows search and then just type in um, remote desktop you'll see this actually comes up here remote desktop top connection um, just start that and what we're going to do is we're going to put in there and um, we know that now the IP address now which was 192.168.5.39 um, so we'll just type in there 39 and there it is and we're just going to say connect um, it's going to give you a little warning just ignore it it's fine and then it will actually start the connection now at this point um, the Raspberry Pi is actually going to ask us a username and password well it's always the default password in, in this particular case we, we've not changed it it's the standard Raspberry uh, Pi password and username so it's Pi and that is PI and then the password is Raspberry all lowercase okay and then just say okay and this little boxer will come up and that's it pretty much so you were in another computer we've actually completely remotely um, actually connected to the Raspberry Pi we're not connected to the Raspberry Pi any other way than just with the with the with the Ethernet port now what we're going to do is by rights it should have installed the drivers and everything by itself for your Wi-Fi dongle and if you hover the mouse over this little uh, um like the the wi-fi antenna signal i uh, think there you'll see it's giving you a couple of bits of information well we know that we're on the ethernet port and we know that that port is 192.168.539 um but we want the um the wi-fi uh, port number in this particular case that one is uh, 192.168.518 okay so now we've got that information we can now log out of that okay we can now disconnect it from the wired ethernet and that now is completely portable so every time you actually plug this in boot it up it will always have that same um, uh, IP address or should do anyway at least um, and you can put this anywhere in the house it will connect to your um, Wi-Fi now completely remotely um, and that is pretty much it where that's concerned um, but let's let's just check our work and make sure that it actually works um, so let's just put in there oh, it's already come up at 18 so there's our, our new IP address and we're just going to say connect the same warning will come up and it will just set itself and again it's PI all lowercase and Raspberry again all lowercase and just say OK and it will now log in what I've done here that the, the first thing you're going to have to do in your case is you're going to have to change this for your DMR CS7 ID number your seven digit ID number now a few people have actually had problems with this where they're not connecting the, the DV4 um, is not connecting um, and they were quite surprised that they need this number I mean if you go to somewhere like um, if you go to www.gb7fc.co.uk um, there's actually there's one of the repeaters um, uh, web pages there you can um, you can register for your um, CCS 7 ID 7 digit ID um, even if you're just using D star you need to do that unfortunately um, the first thing will happen is once you've done it and you've submitted your license details the the following page actually just confirms that you've been registered don't close that page instantly you want to scroll to the top of that page because your number is already there um, so make sure you get that information before you close the, the first page after being registered because um, otherwise you have to wait for the email so just um, just get that that information okay so the f what we're going to do is um, obviously you type your number in in this this little area here um, and that's away you go really and then it actually just defaults. I mean, I was actually last in uh, DMR um, Brandmeister 4400, um, and it's now telling me it's connected. Now, the, the the good thing with this is, once you've actually done this and you, you're at this stage, you don't need a computer anymore. Um, you can actually, um, if you want to, you can actually um, close your um, your thing down your, your the screen the screen down and all you're going to do is you just shut it down and just reboot it and that will actually reboot into the um, 
the db4 software automatically and it will go to where you last left it so if you've left it on 4400 which i often do then that's it it's, you don't need any computer anymore you can access that with linux you can access it with um, with a mac you can access it with windows any version of windows it really doesn't matter um, we've made it completely headless um, so over to you really thanks for watching um, as i say i'm m0tig gary and um, as i say look forward to uh, seeing you next time